So today we're going to go over how to make this simple lightning bolt. Now I'm not actually going to do anything with the tower and actually hitting the enemies yet because we're just going to focus on actually making the shape and the lighting of this bolt. So the basic structure of the node tree is I have a node 2D, which is important to have. I'm going to be using the modulate in just a bit. So the main bolt, which doesn't really need any points in it right now, because we're going to make those all in the script, but it is nice to have them just so you can kind of see and adjust the world environment with the glow and everything. I added a little bit of a default color. I technically have a texture here right now. I don't think it adds that much right now. It's something I'm still experimenting with. Make sure the texture mode is stretch. I also added a width curve here, so that way it will get a little bit skinnier, and then at the very end it will taper off just to give it a little bit more shape and not so blockish. So the world environment node, you'll have to add a new environment. And the first thing you're going to want to do is change the type to canvas. That way you can actually use it in 2D. Then we're going to come down to the glow and enable it. The first thing you're going to want to do is check out the different levels. Basically, this just adjusts how far out the glow goes. If you turn off the level one glow, the, the glow really close to the line is going to be off. And then the seven is the glow that's really far out. So, and then obviously these are all the ones in between. Then what we're going to be changing is the intensity and the strength. And you're just gonna have to adjust those until you get it to a certain brightness that you like. And I suggest you don't go too high with these because most players don't want really bright flashing lights in their face all the time. I also changed the blend mode to additive. One of the most important things is we're going to change the HDR threshold to two. If you leave the threshold at one, everything is going to be overexposed in your scene because the environment affects all of the sprites in your scene. So you will not only have a super bright lightning bolt, all the paths will be way too bright and everything will just be washed out. Now how you avoid that is like I said, we're going to turn into this to two. And then in the lightning, we're going to change the modulate to raw and move these up to 1.4. I find it easier to adjust the color in the main bolt node and then to adjust the glow I, I think it's easier to use the modulate and keep this a white and move these all up at the same rate because otherwise you can affect the color of your lightning bolt quite a bit. So all that the animation player does is it takes the alpha of the main bolt from about 80% up to 100%, that way we get this little flash. And then it quickly tapers off to probably about 20 or 30%, and it kind of lingers there. That way you get the effect of the, the light lingering after a lightning bolt. I'm gonna go through this code really quickly, but if you wanna take a closer look, I'll have the code in the whole project on my GitHub. So the first thing we're gonna have is just a bunch of variables to adjust what the lightning bolt looks like, how jagged it will be, and how many branches it will have. So every time I click the mouse button, we're going to clear out the children of the main bolt. So we're gonna have one main bolt and other children bolts coming off of it and we don't want those children to linger. So we'll clear those out, and then we're going to create a new lightning bolt. So to create a lightning bolt, we're going to take the bolt. In this case, we're sending the main bolt and the target position, which is the mouse right now. We're going to get the length of the bolt. We're going to clear out all of the points that are in that bolt. We're going to add the starting point and the ending point. So before we look at the code, I'd like to show you a picture of what we're going to do. What this code is doing is it's going to take that first line, that starting point and ending point, it's going to find the midpoint, it's going to add a point there and move it up or down, so we end up with this second blue line, and we're going to do that however many times we decide with the variable number of bisects. So each time we cut these line segments in half, we're adding a new point and moving it a little bit until we get this jaggedy line, and eventually we will add branches that come off of some of these points. Now the persistence is how far those points will move each time. So the first time that we cut the line and move it, it will move the full value. We're going to reduce the persistence each time, that way they don't move really, really far and there's no amazingly jagged 
zigzags. It just controls how far each smaller section can move. That way we don't get a point that's way down here and something that doesn't really look like lightning. So this code does exactly what I was just talking about in that diagram. We're going to cut each line segment in half. We're going to add a point there and move it up or down based on the normal or the perpendicular line to that original segment. Now we're going to just pick a random amount of jaggedness each time we're going to make that new point. And these are all the parameters we had at the top of the script, the random scale that we're going to choose each time we shoot the lightning. The jaggedness is the overall jaggedness of the lightning so we can stylize it so it has some consistency. Now the length divided by the bolt, bolt length factor, that's to help keep a uniform look in the lightning. When we have a really, really short line and we make all of these bisects, they're going to be very, very short, so you could end up with a really curly Q lightning. And then, if we have a really long line with the same amount of bisects, it would end up pretty straight by comparison, and they really wouldn't even look like the same type of lightning. We're going to take the length of that lightning and try and keep the same style that it would have if it was a little tiny lightning. And that's what this is doing. Then we have that persistence, and then we have the normal, which is the perpendicular direction. Then we're going to add that point. Now this little helper function here, random positive or negative, that all that is doing is either returning a 1 or a negative 1, and the purpose of it, I will show you, if we don't have that little helper function, it curves the lightning up every time, or in the same direction every time, and we want to be able to invert it sometimes, that way it's not so consistent. This is with that little helper function. It's not so consistently an arc. After we create the main bolt, we're going to pick a number of branches, and then we're going to loop through that many number of branches and create that branch. Again, we're going to send it a bolt and a global position, except this time, the bolt that we're sending it is going to be where we're starting from. So to create the new branch, we're going to make a new line 2D, and copy over all the color, the width, the texture, the mode, the stretch, uh, and the position is actually going to be just a random point in that previous line. If you remember, we're making a whole bunch of points in this line 2D, and we're just going to pick one and have that be the starting point of our new branch. We're going to add that child. So the new target, we don't want to just give it the mouse position because it will overshoot every time. So we have to minus the new branch's starting position. And then this is just to randomize so that way it's not going to exactly the same point. We don't want every single branch and the main bolt to be going to exactly the same pixel. We're going to just vary it a little bit. That way it looks a little bit more random. And then we will create that lightning. So we're going to use that function that we've already been through to create that lightning bolt. After we create all the branches, we are just going to play that animation player. That way we get that little flash effect. So if you'd like to see exactly what's happening, we're going to turn off the animation player and we're going to just set a little timer to go through each step of this process. So I turned off the animation player and slowed down the calculation so you can see what's happening in the code. It's taking each point and it's moving it just a little bit and it keeps looping through the whole thing. So if you have any questions about this, please let me know. I plan on adding this lightning to my isometric tower defense, having a lightning tower or something like that. But I'm also very open to suggestions. And if you like this lightning, go ahead and check out the project on my GitHub.